Coming up on today's Airborne, the first flight was a success for the B Light C Light. FAA certifies GE Honda Aero Engines HF120 turbofan, and Skycraft Airplane says its mini sport certification is two months away. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. B Light Aircraft announced the successful first test flight of their new aircraft, the B Light C Light. The Sea Light is an amphibious carbon fiber float equipped aircraft designed to legally fly under FAR 103 ultralight regulations off either water or land. Although the first test flight was from a conventional grass runway, the expanded test flight plan will soon demonstrate takeoff and landing operations from water as well. The test aircraft is a design variation of B Light's Ultra Cub aircraft with almost every part of the aircraft designed in Wichita, Kansas. The aircraft incorporates a large number of technically advanced features, which allow it to fly with an empty weight under the FAR 103 prescribed maximum. The price of the B-Light line of ultralights ranges from under $20,000 to $60,000. Their aircraft are available as kits or factory completed airplanes. The FAA has awarded FAR Part 33 certification to GE Honda Aero Engine's HF120 turbofan engine, certifying its airworthiness and setting the stage for the production of this all-new engine. During its certification program, 13 of the 2,100-pound thrust HF120 engines accumulated more than 14,000 cycles and 9,000 hours of testing. Assembly is currently underway at GE's facility in Lynn, Massachusetts, which is responsible for initial production. Production will transition to the Honda Aero Incorporated facility in Burlington, North Carolina next year. Skycraft Airplanes reports that it's about two months away from completing certification of its single-place SD-1 Mini Sport, with its current first delivery expected to be made in March. As flight testing has progressed, Skycraft has continued the process of fine-tuning its aircraft. Currently, the SD-1 is undergoing two key performance improvements. The first is a computer update to the fuel-injected Hearth F-23 engine, and the second is an upgrade to the exhaust system. Powered by a fuel-injected 50-horsepower Hearth F-23 engine, Skycraft says the airplane can cruise at 118 miles per hour with a range of 575 miles, burning only 1.8 gallons of fuel per hour. The aircraft needs only 200 feet to take off and 400 feet for landing. It will climb at 1,400 feet per minute. The instrument panel sports a Dynon avionics package. The target list price is $54,850. The Thatcher CX-5, which is a two-place version of the popular CX-4 kit plane, flew for the first time last Tuesday from Jack Edwards Airport in the Florida Panhandle. Dr. Bradley says it's easy to tell the CX-4 and the CX-5 are brothers. He said the canopy in the CX-5 is more rounded and higher. After the flight, he reported that the higher canopy, combined with the fact that the wing is about a foot further back in the CX-5, gives the front seat pilot a better view of the ground. Bradley reported that the nose wheel lifted off at 45 miles per hour, and the aircraft became airborne at 55 miles per hour and climbed briskly at 65 miles per hour. The traffic pattern procedures and approach for landing all went smoothly. Bradley said he was surprised and very pleased with the landing. His summation of the flight was, quote, The higher seating position in the CX-5 makes one feel like they are flying a fighter. It is really superb, end quote. The Airline Pilots Association, ALPA, has some serious concerns with the way Norwegian Air International, known as NIA, is doing business. ALPA President Captain Lee Moak said, quote, Norwegian Air International was clearly designed to attempt to dodge laws and regulations and start a race to the bottom on labor and working conditions, end quote. 
Norwegian Air International is a subsidiary of Norwegian Air Shuttle, known as NAS. The company uses aircraft registered in Ireland and has applied for an air operator certificate from that country. It appears that its flight crews will work under individual employment contracts that are governed by Singapore law and that have wages and working conditions substantially inferior to those of NAS's Norway-based pilots. Moak said, quote, if NAS is permitted to pick and choose the countries in which it establishes its subsidiaries and employs its flight crews, U.S. carriers will be put at a severe competitive disadvantage because the United States has one set of laws and regulations for all of its airlines." End quote. The Chinese government says it's planning to build and launch a lunar probe that will land on the moon and bring samples back to Earth in 2017. The announcement comes after China's Chang-3 spacecraft landed safely on the moon last Saturday. The Chang-3 mission's objective is to conduct scientific research for a year, and its accompanying Jade Rabbit rover will study the structure of the moon as well as search for natural resources. China says the Chang-3 and the planned 2017 mission are steps that could lead to a possible manned moon mission in 2020. The Chinese government says its lunar program aims at developing technologies that will allow it to conduct deep space exploration in the future and is also a source of national pride. The FAA and DIASA have approved Aspen's EA100 autopilot adapter as capable of emulating the Century 52D66, 67, 166, and 167 attitude indicators. The EA100 is now compatible with all attitude-based Century 2B, 3, and 4 autopilots, as well as the Piper Automatic branded autopilots. The EA100 provides a digital-to-analog data conversion between the Evolution 1000 and an aircraft's attitude-based autopilot system. The adapter enables the Evolution Flight Display's attitude heading and reference system to provide accurate and reliable attitude information directly to the pilot. Additionally, the EA100 has the capability to immediately disengage the autopilot if an AHAR's fault is detected. You're watching Airborne, more in a moment. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds and learning proper crosswind landing techniques. Even today, most crosswind landing skills are learned through trial and error, sometimes with disastrous results. Believe it or not, the most common contributing factor in weather-related accidents each year is crosswinds. The second most common factor is wind gusts. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. It teaches pilots the proper techniques to meet and beat these top two causes of weather-related landing accidents. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in challenging crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird flight simulations, the Redbird X-Wind SE, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Rebuilding the sport aviation world one aviator at a time. That's ANN's new Aerosports ebook series, your resource guide to the ultimate in aviation adventures. Aerosport will feature the straight skinny on learning and enjoying 16 unique aviation sports, from ultralights and ballooning to aerobatics, gyroplanes and hang gliders to parachuting, home builds and general aviation to RC models. All this and more will be coming soon with the new updatable Aerosport guide for your favorite electronic devices. Get your advance order in now at www.aerosport.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website or a podcast, drop us an email to news spy at aero news.net. The Maxine Flournoy, Third Coast Squadron of the Commemorative Air Force, also known as the CAF, has broken ground on its new hangar and museum at the T.P. McCampbell Airport in Ingleside, Texas. The squadron's namesake, the legendary World War II pilot and instructor, Maxine Flournoy, was in attendance. Flournoy was one of the first women ever to fly a military aircraft. 
Unit leader Colonel Pearson Knoll said the construction will begin immediately and should be completed by April 15th of 2014. Colonel Knoll said the project infrastructure includes a hangar, museum, offices and conference rooms, and a tarmac area large enough for the unit's planes. Colonel Knoll said that he is confident at this point that the new facility will be built on time and on budget. The project will be built with the support of the CAF, monies from the unit's fundraising activities, local funds, and other public and private parties. It's Friday at last, and that means it's time for ANN's Editor-in-Chief to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. This week, Jim celebrates the fact that despite some amazing obstacles, both for ANN as well as the aviation world, we survived it all. Bring on 2014. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. Well, Christmas is barely a week away. Actually, it's less than a week away. And for the first of seven kids in the Campbell family, we kind of look at Christmas with a great deal of excitement and trepidation because it's brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews. It's kind of like a military campaign. God knows there's just a lot of people everywhere, and it can get dangerous at times. It's really quite something. But God bless them all. It's uh, it's an amazing event for my family, and I look forward to this year in particular because, well, we added one this year. A little bit over a month ago, I got married. Yeah, it happened. I married my best friend. It's uh, We had almost five years of being friends and then best friends, and then a year and a half ago, we ruined a perfectly good friendship and discovered there was even more to us. I could be happier. You'll hear more about it in bits and pieces. I tend to be a little bit more private about these things, but to make a long story short for all those who asked, yeah, I'm a happy guy and life looks really good. And thank you for that. ANN went through some real hell this year. So did the rest of aviation. ANN had to deal with the attack of a company that wanted for a number of different reasons to shut us up at all costs. And they almost did it. But we stood up for ourselves. We stood up for our honor, our integrity, our ethics and we didn't back down. It was costly, but we survived, and we will not only survive and persevere, but you watch, we're gonna thrive. 2014 looks to be one of the most spectacular years we've ever had on the water, and it looks really, really interesting. The Sport Plane Resource Guide will be coming out. The Aerosports book is coming out. I have a 10th anniversary photo book coming out with XPRIZE called Beyond the Blue, which is one of the most exciting projects I've ever undertaken. There's a few more that I'll look forward to telling you about a little bit later on. There's a massive revamp for the Aero News site. And when I say massive, it's not a facelift. We're talking about changing the modality. One of the marvelous things about hanging around with some of the people who I have uh, hung around with over the years, including the guys who started Google and one of the guys who started PayPal and now runs SpaceX and so forth, is that you get a chance to talk to the real experts who look forward to what's happening with communications. And I have to tell you, there's the revolution's not even it's not over. It's barely begun. What we do with our information, how we make it more portable, more mobile, more useful, more adaptable, and build communities around that, that's going to be the real trick. I mean, we've got a design for the next Aero News that I think is as groundbreaking as what we did over 15 years ago when we designed the first 24-7 real-time aviation news service, the one that everybody's been trying to copy and, frankly, not been very successful at doing. So we've got a good year coming up. But most of all, it's thanks to you. It's thanks to the support. It's thanks for your understanding. It's thanks for your, criti your criticism, because frankly, I learned more from that than anything. And thanks to just for the most supportive community I could, any guy could ask for. And more particularly, to an amazing staff at Aero News, staff and a few folks who help us. I have a core staff that are amazing people that do an extraordinary job. And frankly, for not nearly as much pay as I think they deserve, but maybe this next year we'll be able to cure some of that. We have a secondary staff of folks who help us at special events and support us in a number of roles. And those people are absolutely amazing. I, I, there's so many of them. There's uh, several dozen, and they are all extraordinary. And then, of course, there's all the folks who write in and call in and with their ideas and with their concepts and with their approval or even their disapproval. And I can't tell you how much it means to me, how much it inspires me, and more important, what kept me going through the worst times that we've had this year when it was really, really tough. The thing that kept us going more than anything else was the fact that we knew we were telling you the truth. We knew it was important. We knew we were helping you. And we knew that our best days were ahead of us if we just kept slogging on. And my message to you is basically this. 
We have an amazing 2014 plan for you. We hope you will have continue to have your support. And more important, we hope you'll have a we hope you'll continue to tell us what you need, what you don't need, what you like, what you don't like, what concerns you, and be a part of the Aero News experience. Because aviation needs a revolution, and we intend to deliver. For the Aero News Network Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. Happy holidays to you all. Quicksilver Aeronautics has completed the entire flight test regimen required to comply with ASTM industry consensus standards for its Sport 2S airplane. The company expects this will lead to FAA acceptance of the Sport 2S as a special light sport aircraft, also known as SLSA. Quicksilver has produced more than 15,000 kit-built aircraft since the early 1970s. This will be their first SLSA. Daniel Perez, Chief Operations Officer for the California company, said, quote, We completed an entire ASTM design and performance standard test matrix that demands more than 100 hours of test flying, end quote. He also noted that those flight hours involved 236 takeoffs and landings. Perez says the success in achieving these results prepares them for a visit from several FAA officials scheduled for later this month. If Quicksilver gains the approval of the agency, they are prepared to swiftly put the Sport 2S into production as a full factory-built aircraft. If Quicksilver gains the approval of the agency, they are prepared to swiftly put the Sport 2S into production as a fully factory-built aircraft. Well, that's our program. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed twice weekly and is always online. Join us again next Tuesday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.